自動車メーカーの看板を背負ってますから、はい、笑ってはいますけど腹の中はもう真剣ですよさあ間もなくですカウントダウン21と来て今スタートです第1コーナー飛び込んでいきましたさあさあさあさあさあ現役時代の脇坂十一でしたねだからやっぱりデングダーでねなんという
皆さんこんにちは第46回東京モーターショー2019フューチャーエキスポ e モータースポーツステージにお越しいただきましてありがとうございますこれより自動車メーカー対抗ガチバトルを開催いたしますえ国内外から集まった10社の自動車メーカーが3人1組のチームとなって白熱のガチバトルを繰り広げますえそしてこの模様は YouTube そして Facebook 日英2カ国語で同時配信しております私本日司会を務めさせていただきます平岩康介と伊沢恵美ですよろしくお願いいたしますさあそれではここで本日のレースを解説いただきますスペシャルゲストにご登場いただきましょう元レーシングドライバーそして ARTA エグゼクティブアドバイザーです土屋圭一さんですお願いします土屋圭さんようこそこんにちは。こんにちは。よろしくお願いします。Hello and welcome to the 2019 Gran Turismo World Tour. We are here, ready for the manufacturer exhibition race. You can just see、uh, on stage at the moment. We've got our、uh, guest up there, and、uh, it'll be interesting to see how it all goes on. Our two MCs up there talking to、uh, him as well. Yeah, Mr. Casey Tucci up there in the middle, of course. A legendary race driver. He was here last year for the last year's manufacturer exhibition race, so he knows what to expect. And what we tend to see is,、uh, well, I think it's、uh, fair to say the race is quite eventful, <laughs> if nothing else. And of course, this series、uh, famous because we have so many cool people taking part. Tom. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting mix of、uh, employees of、uh, various different、uh, racing manufacturers, real-life racing drivers, and Gran Turismo drivers、uh, here as、uh, well. So,、uh, just talking through this on stage. Team Daihatsu! And first of all, we're going to welcome up Team Daihatsu onto the stage. Shinko Kubo, Ryoma Kawasaki, and Eagle Frog are driving for that team behind the wheel of the、uh, Toyota FT1 GR3 car. There's Eagle Frog on the right hand side. And we'll try and translate for you here. So, we're saying it's Team Daihatsu, it's their first event at the、uh, World Tour, part of course of the.、Uh, team Honda! For this outfit, Team Honda next up. Yuji Aminaki, Tape Natori, and GT driver Shohei Sugimori. I'm going to say, by the way, Tom, that one of those drivers,、uh, Notori, there, is actually a、uh, racing driver, F3 driver from Team Carbon. So, yeah, exactly. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. Here is Team Subaru. Mikhail has out there on the、uh, right hand side of your screen. Masahiro Uabo and Arai Hiroki driving for that team. Also a racing driver in the world of rallying. Bit of a legend in terms of、uh, the rallying world well, there as well. Well, son of to Toshi Arai, one of the、uh, fastest、uh, Japanese racing drivers ever to, to be seen. So, great to see him here and、uh, great to see that legendary、uh, state is carrying on. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. There was Takuma Miyazono just talking to the、uh, crowd here in Tokyo in Japan. Next up is Team Mazda. Oh, Mitsubishi, sorry, apologies.、Uh, team Mitsubishi. Ahiko,、uh, Akihiko Nakaya, Toshiki Ito, and Satoshi Hashimoto driving for that team. Satoshi being the、uh, GT driver, a recommended driver, and an employee of the、uh, company as well. Uh, just addressing the,、uh, the crowd here. And、uh, Nakaya san, also a bit of a legend in the world of touring cars. 61 years old he is, but、uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. Actually, Ray Pesuchia as well, our guest、uh, commentator. Also, Team Suzuki up on the stage at the moment. That's made up of Kota Nanakashi, Hirotaka Hir、oh, Matasubara, and Kazuki Nishimura, of course, our GT driver. Also, an employee of.、Uh, Of Suzuki, so good to see him up here. Yeah, we're excited to see how they get on. They'll be competing in the、uh, Lexus Group 3 machine here. Team Toyota, a lot of support for them here at the、uh, Mega World. You can see the racing suit there. Hey, can you guess the racing driver, Tom? <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs>、uh, that'll be, of course,、uh, Sena Sagayuchi. Drives in the All Japan F3 Championship and、uh, also in Super GT as well. Part of that team,、uh, Kazuki Cho, very quick on、uh, the world of Gran Turismo, so keep an eye out for him. He's the employee of the company that's driving for the team.、Uh, also, Tomoki Yamanaka, our Gran Turismo driver, there on the 
far right hand side of your picture as you can see so uh, definitely could be a force to be reckoned with could be but we tend to see that the uh, gg employee is usually the employee of the company usually wants to let us down we'll see if that happens again here so here's team renault as well uh, yo yoshihara satoshi sato and daisuke endo driving for that team and hopefully we can just get a few words there we'll see if we can try and translate what he's saying there for you uh, saying it's the first time for renault to be uh, competing here and they're hoping for a uh, strong race. Well, let's hope they don't start changing brake bias later on. No, quite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is then Team Mazda. Uh, Yuji Karasawa, Yuki Itagi and Ryota Kokuban there on the far right hand side of your picture, of course, competing uh, for Team Mazda. And they think that they can win this one, just according there to uh, one of the gentlemen. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Team Mercedes-Benz then, what can they do? Reina Sato, Kento Miata, and also Cody Nikola Lukowski there on the right-hand side of your uh, picture. See how that team will get on. So they want to uh, have a strong race and see how they're going to get on uh, here for this one. Now up, it's Team Nissan. Koei Hirati, Yoshiki Fukunaga, and then Yuta Oshi driving for that team. Koei Hirati, of course, the uh, racing driver as part of that outfit on the uh, left hand side of your picture. And of course, uh, Yuta Oshi, the uh, GT driver on the far right hand side of your uh, picture there. So there we are, those are the teams that are going to be competing here in this uh, manufacturer exhibition race at the Mega Web in Tokyo. Strong lineups for a lot of these uh, teams here, Jimmy Broadbent. It's going to be pretty exciting to see how they all fare over the course of, uh, of this race. Well, the great thing about this, uh, this manufacturer exhibition series, Tom, is that we have, usually have two very strong drivers and then one uh, employee who's never really uh, driven before. So <laughs> we tend to have a bit of carnage as that involves, especially if they tend to put the employee in first. And Team 1 is a bit of a, uh, well, a, bit of a scramble, I think it's fair to say right now. We have to cheer up on stage as well. As I mentioned, he was here last year. And uh, uh, he seems to very much enjoy himself last year. I think he spent most of last year laughing at the race. So we'll, we'll see if we have a, a similar theme this year. Yeah, hopefully there's not going to be too much carnage there uh, going on for these teams. Should be pretty exciting to see how they all fare. There are Japanese commentators, Kazuki Yamada on the left-hand side of your picture, and uh, Hideyuki Nakajima on the far right-hand side of your picture. Uh, Strategy is going to be pretty interesting for this one here, Jimmy. They're all going to be competing at the uh, Suzuka circuit. Uh, three different tyre compounds available, racing hard, medium and soft. They must use those tyres, though, for a minimum of three laps. And it's a 15-lap race duration, so uh, strategy could be quite an interesting call in this one. So what that translates as is, is we're going to see three laps for the uh, the employee. <laughs> and then yes. the, the pro driver and the duty driver will do the rest, most likely. But uh, that's basically in there just to make sure we get some laps out of the employee. Because you don't, you don't want to... If I, if I were a GT driver and that wasn't the case, but right, you've done your one lap, get out. <laughs> you've done yes. enough damage. <laughs> and now it's time for me to get in. But uh, our driver's now just getting up onto the stage and getting ready to race. As again, we're hearing from our Japanese commentators on your feed right now. And uh, you know, I would love to see some cheering one of these races, actually. I wonder if he would do it. Yeah, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? I think so, there'd be a big check that goes on with that. If you want, yes, <laughs> possibly. If you want him to do that. Quite so. possibly. <laughs> yeah, all the drivers just making their way onto the uh, sleds now. Uh, as you said there, Jimmy, and uh, you can see on your screen all the different teams. Toyota, Suzuki, Honda, Subaru, Nissan, Daihatsu, Mazda, Mercedes, Mitsubishi and uh, Renault. In the case of uh, Suzuki and uh, also Daihatsu, they'll be racing uh, a Lexus and a Toyota, respectively, uh, within different uh, liveries on their cars. All part, of course, of the uh, same group. So. Uh, very interested to see how they're all going to get on over the course of uh, this event here. What's that say at the bottom there, Tom? Uh, do you know, my Japanese isn't fluent, Jimmy. I've got to be honest with you. Sadly, I've not brushed up on Put it. Put you on spot there. <laughs> uh, so the Suzuka Circuit is going to be the home of this manufacturer exhibition at race. And as you can see, a legendary track doesn't really need an introduction, but uh, 5.8 kilometres long. Those S-bends in the first sector into the Degna curves are going through the hairpin, then you head up in towards the spoon curve, down the straight, 130R, and the chicane and the long sweep of right hand are to complete the lap. Bit of elevation going on here as Suzuka. Big old drop down to that first corner. The top point, of course, at the spoon curve. 52 metres, uh, as you can see. 
And as you can see, uh, we'll see in a few moments' time with the race details, uh, get a better idea of exactly what is going to be happening at the Suzuka circuit. So Group 3 machinery for them, Jimmy. Yep, that's right. Group 3 cars, you'll know them very well. They've been a big feature in our series over the last year and a bit. 15 laps of a circuit. It's quite a long race, this. With uh, racing hard, medium and soft tyres having to be used, as we said before, a minimum of three laps on each tyre. So that would be three laps on the racing hard tyre and then try and split the rest of the laps between the medium and the soft. Tire wear at times four, meaning the tyres are going to feel very different each lap. With fuel consumption at times two, shouldn't be too much of uh, a worry for our drivers here. And here is our predicted strategy, as you can see on your screen right now. We've they're going to do five laps on each tyre. Well, uh, I say that, we're probably going to see more uh, laps on the racing soft tyre. In terms of tyre difference in speed, 1.6 seconds separates the racing hard and the soft, with the medium tyre being in between one tyre, so it's 0 0.9 seconds slower than the soft compound of tyre. So being on the right tyre at the right time, as with most of these races, is going to be very important. Yeah, it certainly is. Tire change there, as you can see, the speed of uh, two seconds there and thereabouts. Probably about 10 seconds, I'd imagine, is the lost pit stop time. So just worth bearing that in mind. Strategy, as we said, could be very important. And also the uh, experience of the driver will be pretty crucial. You can see this is how the grid will line up. Daihatsu on pole position, Honda alongside, and the other team is a little bit further down the order. Just in the background there, standing up, you can see Mikhail Hazao. Uh, he'll be giving some tips to Team Subaru at the moment to try and see how they will fare. There's down on the floor with Team Daihatsu, just down in front of us, Team Suzuki very close behind. Team Radio for these uh, boys as well. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Not the Team Radio. Well, if it's all in Japanese, it's redundant for us, oh, to be I was going to say, sometimes we get to listen in, but there are a couple of drivers in there who are speaking English, so Cody, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll get some, uh, some communication there, but I doubt it. Well, it could be pretty exciting. We'll be pretty excited to find out uh, how they all get on. And here are our Japanese commentators just... Uh, talking us through the uh, action here at the uh, MegaWeb in Tokyo, our venue for World Tour 5 of the 2019 Gran Turismo World Tour. So this manufacturing exhibition race uh, will be quite interesting to see how these drivers will all go on. Expected turn of events uh, would be to go for the racing soft, medium and hard tyres in that order. Uh, but considering, of course, the tyres will last longer when the fuel has been burned and the uh, car is lighter. Might be a few teams that use the soft tyres when the fuel is a little bit lower instead? It depends, really. It depends where you are on the grid, we always say. If you're in a, a strong grid position, you tend to want to use soft tyres to get away and uh, not have to deal with everybody else in traffic. But uh, we have the employees, I think, getting in first. I think they're the, uh, the uh, guys that are going to be driving first on this stint. So uh, there's quite a, a wide range of skill levels there, I think, is the, uh, the nicest way of putting it. So uh, whether that strategy is going to be a big deal or not, I'm not sure. But what we saw last year, the racing drivers having a bit of fun, and then the GT drivers got in and just did what they did best, <laughs> just started going hammer and tong. So I imagine we'll see something similar this year. Yeah, all the boys about to get ready then to go racing for this uh, manufacturing exhibition race. It's going to be pretty exciting and a good amount of fun here as well. So uh, let's get ready then to get it underway, shall we, in Tokyo. The Manufacturer Exhibition race here in Tokyo on Gran Turismo Sport. Here are the cars and how they line up on the grid. On pole position, it is Team Daihatsu in the Toyota FT1 Group 3 machine. That is them lining up on pole position. Alongside them on the front row of the grid, it will be Team Honda. Row two, we'll see Subaru heading that row. And alongside Subaru, it'll be Mitsubishi in the Lancer Evo machine. The third row of the grid is the Team Suzuki in the Lexus machine. Very striking livery on that car, reminiscent of their MotoGP bike. Toyota, Team Toyota in P6. Good amount of support for them here, of course, this weekend. Renault in uh, P7 in the RSO1 GT3 machine. Alongside Renault, it is Mazda in the Atenza. In ninth position on the next row of the grid is Team Mercedes-Benz. And alongside the uh, German manufacturer, it's the Japanese car, the Nissan GTR Group 3 machine. Very interesting to see those liveries on the cars, eh? Top of the Daihatsu all over the, the Toyota. Because yes. as we explained before, they're all part of the same group. So they're running on the, the Lexus and Toyota, uh, Daihatsu and Suzuki, respectively. Uh, in terms of the tyre choice, uh, a bit random mixed up. The, a lot of people were opting to go for the hard tyre. In fact, uh, and the, the six, uh, sorry, seven of the uh, ten starters opting for the hard tyre with three on the mediums. And of course, it'll be the long run down a T1, which is going to be coming up soon after the final chicane. Daihatsu leading off the field. We'll see the drivers getting ready now. And uh, just a, little, a couple of stretches there. Some people are taking this quite seriously up there, I think. They're really getting into it. 
Yeah, well, try not to stretch up here in the uh, commentary box. Never mind, I'll probably do my back in. Uh, 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 well, <laughs> all, yeah, all that's quite. So, Team Daihatsu then leading the field through the uh, final game. Big old long run up to this uh, first corner. Press the loud pedal and then go. And, uh, well, down to that first turn, it's so difficult to judge. Uh, your speed through there and braking into there. And we might see a bit of carnage and some fireworks through that corner. And it uh, should be interesting to see how it all fares in that first part of the lap, and especially in the second part as it all begins to open up. So Daihatsu from Honda, from Subaru, the manufacturer exhibition race here in Tokyo at Suzuka is underway. Then Daihatsu lead the field over the timing line, but Honda slotting into the slipstream. You can see Mercedes-Benz go to the far inside line, and here comes Subaru as Honda tried to pull alongside Daihatsu. Subaru going for the inside line as well, three wide down towards the first corner. Who's going to break late? Is Honda on the middle? Super on the inside, and Daihatsu goes spinning round. Oh, this hand no. off into the gravel trap. Carnage early doors there. Lots of work to do for Daihatsu. Somebody else off in the background. I think it was Mercedes Benz. It was. And now it is Subaru that lead the way from Honda Toyota, who are trying to challenge for P2. But they are now side by side with Team Suzuki on the outside of the S's. Well, this is an employer there just forgot where the corner went. He just went straight into the gravel trap, maybe looking to get his uh, tan on for the beach season coming next season. But it's Subaru right now leading the way, I think, free from the car to T1, Honda in second place in that Group 3 NSX with Toyota leading uh, behind them in third. Uh, Daihatsu, who did actually start the race on pole, now down to eighth after that disastrous first corner. But other than that, people are now starting to get a little bit neat, a bit more tidy, and the race is getting underway. Toyota looking to challenge Honda coming into the hairpin, it'll be the left-hand side of the track, overtaking into there. Honda there taking the inside line to defend. Will the Toyota try and cut back? No, not quite close enough to do that, but Honda keeps second place. Running nose to tail through that corner up through the run into Spoon, they will go now. And look at Subaru stretching their legs early doors here. 1.8 seconds, uh, 1.1 seconds, I should say, rather, is the advantage that they have at the moment. But Honda being carried by Team Toyota as they come into the Spoon curve. Again, Honda defending that inside line, parking the car perfectly on the apex, but taking a tighter line through Spoon. That could compromise their run here onto the straight and allow Toyota to draw alongside. And indeed, it does. Now Toyota challenging for P2, drawing alongside Honda and through on the corner exit. So a supreme drive for Team Toyota out of the spoon curve and onto the straight has allowed them to get into second place now and potentially Honda could be even under even more threat here because Suzuki and Mitsubishi are most definitely within touching distance as they come down towards that chicane for the first time. In the background there, that is Suzuki and Mitsubishi going side by side into the chicane. I think Mitsubishi has come out on top of that battle temporarily and now we that's one lap completed and the uh, surviving teams have come through to take that to that. Joke is still in second place. There's Honda and Mitsubishi now. Suzuki dropping back just a little bit there in the background. Mitsubishi getting the toe coming down to T1. Look at the speed of that Honda though in a straight line. No, not able to keep with him coming into the first corner. Mitsubishi getting quite late on the brakes and he ran into the back of the Honda in front. And just like that, Suzuki is back into the fray. So third, fourth, and fifth. Very close right now. See the drivers there on the left hand side of your screen. Supreme focus and Team Honda. Mitsubishi side by side. They come through the S's. Mitsubishi trying to go the long way around the outside. They're going to switch left. Mitsubishi will have the inside line. They'll have trap position and they have third place. That is brilliant from Team Mitsubishi carrying the Honda NS and through into the top three positions. And now Honda coming under threat from the Lexus Suzuki hybrid machine, whatever you want to call it, in P5. Potentially, they could be challenging for fourth place. But look at Team Toyota. After they've managed to get some clear air out in front, they are now really closing significantly up onto the back of Team Subaru. You can see there Team Toyota in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, the employee of the company, driving that car at the moment as Subaru go defensive into the corner. That is uh, Kazuki Cho, who is behind the wheel of that machine, we believe, at the moment and he is doing a great job of harrying for the race lead. Here we are then, coming up towards Spoon Care for the second time, using the toe all the way down. You can get an overtake on the inside here if you're on the right line. Toe to there, goes to the inside. It's going to be an overtake attempt for the lead here. Slides up the inside, up into first place, but Subaru still there on the switch back. Now, now side by side, coming for the second part on the corner, and Subaru going to come out ahead for now. So just about defending the position, but now it's a long toe up towards 130R. These guys aren't going to be doing it one hand, I can guarantee you that. As we come up now, Toe to falling back a little bit on the straight line. Look at that Subaru. Subaru's got quite a bit of grunt there. Toyota just showing the nose coming into 130. Oh, definitely too far back to take a, a, a stab there. But meanwhile, Suzuki, Mazda and Mitsubishi. Mazda coming up through the field. Mazda looking up the inside of Suzuki there, but just about backing out, going through 130. Oh, as we come into the chicane for the second time, Mitsubishi on the inside. Mazda on the inside, far too quick into the chicane, but drifts it, holds it on the apex, just about. Mazda takes further, but then they're slow on the chicane. And Suzuki goes round the outside. Mitsubishi trying to make it free wide, but not quite doing so. Suzuki breathing a sigh of relief there in the background. They are going for my guys. Calm down. 
It's happened last year as well. They're free wide coming down the T1. Mitsubishi on the inside. Honda in the middle. Mazda on the outside. Sweeps round. Takes the position. And Mazda go up to fourth place. What a move. That was inspired from Mazda. They were really shuffled out. And that's last year came because they had nowhere to move the uh, use the momentum that they had. Here come Mitsubishi around the outside of Honda at turn two. Brilliant stuff there from Mitsubishi. The bit between their teeth at the moment. Now they're hurrying Mazda for P4 on lap three out of five here. Now, crucially, of course, we have to realise that uh, Mazda on the hard compound of tyres, Mitsubishi on the medium compound. Now, here is the change for the race lead between Toyota and Subaru. Toyota driving clean around the outside of Subaru at the chicane. That is brilliant driving from Team Toyota. Now, they have a seven-tenth of a second advantage over Subaru in second, and Suzuki all on their own, really. A bit lonely at the moment in P3, but Mazda not lonely at all, because they have got Mitsubishi oh! challenging it off in the background. They go Honda to the inside wall, losing it on the curve, spinning up the rear wheel, straight to the scene of the accident and now Mazda defend P5 but Mitsubishi going around the outside can they hold it that's brilliant driving from Mitsubishi absolutely seen fantastic that. I have never seen that happen before I mean congratulations Mitsubishi um, but now you've got to chase down Suzuki in front Subaru and Toyota the gap is starting to open up a little bit there's eight seconds between the, the lead two and the third place right now but we've got a battle there on our screen which we'll focus on which is Mazda and Mitsubishi Mazda will have the toe coming up to 1.30. Yeah, let's see what that attempt that can do in a straight line, shall we? Coming down the straight now, just in the toe. 1.30 R for the third time. And again, this is where you want to try and set up the car ready for the last chicane. Passing through 1.30 R is quite difficult. I wouldn't recommend it. It does happen, though, of course. But into the, the, the final chicane, so we want to try and set up things for. Meanwhile, in front of the field choke, they're putting away top. Do a really good job. Super into the pit lane then. Want to get off those hard combat of tyres as soon as they possibly can. They'll be changing drivers and changing tyres to the medium compound then as they come into the uh, pit box and uh, taking over is the next driver for Team Subaru. So Rai getting in the yeah, car. Yeah, it there. is Rai, yeah, Rai Hiroki getting into the car, as you say. So uh, keeping an eye up him very, very quick will uh, Rai Hiroki. And also, of course, they've got their uh, GT driver being Mick Hizal. Mitsubishi and Mazda also into the box, as well as Nissan early doors. Haven't spoken about uh, Nissan very much over the course of uh, this race here. Soft tyres, though, for Mazda in their middle stint. Now, that is an interesting strategy call. I think uh, most people from the hearts will go on to the mediums, but uh, going for the softs there for the Mazda. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. hello. Mazda there getting his elbows out as the Honda's having an accident on the way through. Mazda goes, I ain't got any time for this. Just bashes him out of the way. Up through now to the S's. Um, just trying to get a nice line through there, but Honda, I think, having a, a bit of a problem. Now, bear in mind that Mazda is now on the soft compound of tyres, uh, wants to try and make as uh, better run of this middle stint as possible. Didn't see you got in for the Mazda, Tom. Did you see that? Uh, no, I did not. I didn't know. You're absolutely right uh, there, Jimmy. I did, I did miss that. So, uh, it's a bit yeah, we, busy. We'll try and try. We don't, we don't get that info. We have to, we have to basically watch you sprint up to the stage. Quite, yeah. <laughs> try and guess where they're going. But uh, I think it's fair to say, probably, probably the GT driver at this point, if they're on the soft compound of time. No, it's not. I'll lie. This is our legendary touring car driver, 61 years old. That is Akiko Nakaya, and he, uh, again, used to race with uh, Keiichi Tsuchiya, who's uh, currently our guest commentator for the Japanese Cup. Let's see um, him put that experience to use. He's pretty quick out there, though. Doing really well, actually, and he needs to be, really, because uh, he's in clear air at the moment, and he's in the prime position to try and uh, make something of it at the moment. Just in front of him, you can see Daihatsu and Mazda looking pretty close between one another, and Mazda going through on the inside as Daihatsu having their own crash going through that corner. Maybe there was a bit of contact we didn't see, but nowhere for oh. Mitsubishi to go. They shove off themselves to the inside of the track. There's a little bit of door handle bashing between them, but he manages to keep it on the straight and narrow there. So uh, good stuff from Mitsubishi through into, P into P5. Come to normal there, there. Mazda, I think, is just bashing people out of the way at this point. Because that's not happening super the wayside. We saw Honda by the wayside at the start of the lap. I think the Mazda's on a bit of a mad one, so to speak. Suzuki into the pit lane then. Uh, they're going to go from medium tyres to the soft compound of tyre, which is the fastest tyre we see. Of course, Suzuki repping the Lexus. And then gets there, I think that's their racing driver. Yeah, Tom's got the, Tom's got the list. Yeah, I've got the list in front of me. That uh, will be. Uh, let's go on to their employees at the. Uh, well, in fact, they've got three employees racing for Team Suzuki. Uh, so uh, it could be interesting to see how it goes on. But if it's the GT driver, that will be uh, Kazuki Nishimura. Uh, Daihatsu also into the pit lane here now as well, then. So now they're going to make a very quick driver change indeed here. So they change over their driver. And uh, just having a look at the sheet, I think that could be. Uh, Kubo San, Shingo Kubo, who is now behind the wheel of that car. Now, let's see what happened here between Mitsubishi and Daihatsu. Down towards that chicane, you can see Daihatsu trying to challenge Mitsubishi. There's contact between them. Mitsubishi goes spinning round. Daihatsu 
through into P5, Mitsubishi facing the wrong way just before their pit stop. That is a big loss for them. That uh, Toyota Daihatsu hybrid, as we're calling it now, I think a bit of a weapon, not a good weapon, though. <laughs> no, really, yeah. Oh, hello, Suzuki off in the background. Oh, They're hello. off into the uh, gravel just before the second, Degna there, and that's disappointing for them because they were running very high indeed up in P2 at that particular point in the race. So whether that was a mistake or whether they received a helping hand from another driver remains to be seen. But either way, facing the wrong way in the gravel and hitting the barrier is not the way you want to be negotiating this Suzuka circuit. No, definitely not. Uh, wise words there from Tom. And I see the Honda there taking a little bit of a liberty with the track limit there, but I think they'll be forgiven. And meanwhile, the front of the Toyota, 24 second gap. They are yet to pit, though, so we'll, when they pit, that time will come down slightly. That's a big lead right now. Yeah, it's very impressive indeed, 23 seconds. It's only about 11 seconds or so, the pit stop loss time here. So uh, they could be in the pounces here, Team Toyota. They've got a very strong lineup, as we were mentioning uh, earlier on. And it'll be interesting to see who they do change over the drivers to. Uh, five laps they'll have done on this uh, compound of tyres, so they will have to change over to get their other drivers in. Uh, very shortly indeed. You can see sideways there for Team Honda just trying to get the car drifting through the spook curve and a smile on the face of the driver at the moment. Down in P8, I think mean, they've got to give themselves something to smile about running that low at the moment. Well, I mean, luckily for our, our guys, there is, there is the, the boost is on for these guys, so the guys down the back of the field are going to get a bit of a kick. Just trying to keep the racing interesting because there is such a wide uh, widespread of talent here. Meanwhile, Nissan, there, the big old turbo brick that we all love, the GTR. I can't wait, oh, I love that car so much. <laughs> Coming down the, the straight now, they're up, they're coming up to fifth, fourth, I think they're in fifth right now. The uh, time is having a bit of a mouth on as well. Um, and uh, only about a second behind Suzuki in front on the soft compound of tyres. So it's managing to uh, close in there despite being on the slower compound of tyres. I do think the Suzuki driver right now, maybe not the, the fastest out of the, the pairing. We saw him off earlier at the Degner as well. So. Yeah. Might be struggling a bit. Not least the most consistent either, Jimmy. I saw a few missed apexes uh, going on there at the moment, and it's either uh, Nakanishi-san or Mats, uh, Matsuburara, who is behind the wheel of that car at the moment, one of the uh, employees, their GT driver, uh, still to race in uh, that car. So uh, let's keep an eye on that and see how things go. Just running aboard here with Team Nissan, closing down now on to Team Suzuki, who are in fourth place. Super have got given a penalty for some reason or another. Whether that's a track limits penalty, I imagine it must be because we didn't see uh, exactly what uh, happened for that team. There wasn't a contact with any other drivers, nothing under investigation from our race stewards. Meanwhile, look in the background there, Daihatsu challenging against Mitsubishi. Up in towards the hairpin we go. Will we see any moves being made? Not quite close enough for Daihatsu on this occasion. We're getting very much onto the back of Mitsubishi here, trying to signal their intentions. They've got a good exit coming out of there, but no room to use all that momentum that they gathered up. And now coming down towards the spoon curve is where we could see potential moves being made. Depends on the line they take, depends on the run that they get coming up through here. Not quite close enough here for Daihatsu to challenge, but definitely looking the quicker of the pairing at the moment. I'll tell you what, if I was in the Mitsubishi right now, I'd be scared of the Daihatsu. That thing's been uh, very aggressive the entire race. Meanwhile, Toyota pitting in from the lead, so in comes Toyota. Their first drive stop, spending a lot of time on the hard combat tyre, and, oh, can you guess if that's a racing driver or not getting in right now? So I'm not sure. So there goes our racing driver for Toyota getting into the car right now. We'll be handing in to uh, Igor Fryer, Grand Nations Cup champion from last year after that. That is uh, Sano Sakaguchi, man. I, I, Easy for you to say, Jimmy. Yeah, and this is uh, lots of S's. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. That's a marvellous. <laughs> uh, Subaru also into the pit lane now, changing from the uh, medium to the soft compound of the tyres. Then they've done their minimum of three laps on that tyres. Now they're going to go on to the soft compounds then, try and run that to the very end of that race. Very bold strategy, but Mikhail Hazal takes over the wheel of the Subaru. Where are they going to emerge? It's going to be a bit, a bit of traffic because they're going to be very close behind uh, uh, Lexus there, Suzuki, uh, in the third position. So just keep an eye out on that between those drivers because uh, we know that the driver behind the wheel of the Suzuki at the moment is not necessarily the quickest out on circuit, but uh, it's worth very much to see how close Mick can get. He's also on the soft compound of tyres. Now here's Daihatsu versus Mick. Mitsubishi, it was a battle that was going on earlier on in this one. A little bit wide there for Mitsubishi and Era as Nissan also running wide. Honda as well. This was great three wide action. Honda going through on Daihatsu and also Mitsubishi taking profit, oh, sending down the inside of both of them. That was very rough and ready. Far too aggressive going through there. Honda losing out. Mitsubishi ultimately losing out after just biting off a bit more than they could chew and uh, slotting themselves a bit further down the order. You're getting a little bit rough out there. As we, uh, what we like about the exhibition race is that, uh, like I said, the, uh, the wide range of skill. Uh, there are some people who may be not quite as home on the simulator as others. And, oh, uh, Mazda off. That's one of them. Mazda off in the moment, off with a 0.5 second penalty on that soft compound of tyres. So losing out of time there. And Subaru 
and now up into well, up in second place and 27 seconds behind Toyota. So big gap. Where did, where did that gap come from? That's a massive gap. Subaru, though, have made, as you say, two stops. And that will be Mick Hazal now, I think, going to the end. So let's see what he can do, if anything. Those tyres are going to be pretty short towards the end of that race, however. It's a long, long stint to do on those tyres. Penalty there for Mazda. They'll serve that half a second. That should allow Suzuki to go sliding on through down the straight. Mercedes-Benz come out of the pit lane, then they've made their final stop. They are also going for the softs at the very end of this race, which only just over the halfway stage here at Suzuka. So a lot of these drivers and teams opting to do the uh, soft compound of tyres. There's Cody Lukowski behind the wheel of the car, and what he is concentrating to spot giving us a good thumbs up there. And it'll be interesting to see what he can do down in P9 at the moment as things stand. Got a lot of ground to make up as Mazda also coming into the pit lane then. They're going from the uh, soft tyres, making a driver change as our team Nissan, who've been given a penalty. Soft to mediums for Mazda, mediums to soft on the other way around there for team Nissan as they come out for their uh, second and uh, final stops here at Suzuka then. And Kodal Lukowski got the bit between his teeth. He's got quite a lot of ground to make up. You can see there visibly uh, how much he is down on Team Nissan and Mazda, given the fact that they are in the pit lane at the moment as things stand. Here we are, then coming through the uh, Fs. Probably my favourite part of this course, I think. Very challenging to get through here. Uh, and then you have the Dunlop curve at the end of it. This long left hand here, very easy to go wide here. There's a dip into the gravel trap behind as well. We're seeing a Daihatsu Mitsubishi, sorry, having a bit of a, a scrap. And that Daihatsu car has been involved in pretty much every incident on the circuit so far. So I think it's a sticker for that. Um, and saying that, now looking onto the back of Honda. So whoever's in that Daihatsu right now really is moving. Uh, but maybe a little bit too on the aggressive side. Now the three are together. Honda, oh, Honda gets launched into the barrier on the left there. You can't be slow off that corner with these guys behind you. Mazda makes a mistake. Sorry, Mitsubishi makes a mistake as well. And then Nissan in the background having to dodge the stricken Honda. A bit of a war zone out there at the moment. Very close indeed, isn't it? It's getting pretty frantic in the midfield. Uh, in the uh, mid stages of the top 10 in this race, there is Mazda then, then having their own uh, moments out on track. There is a team at Mazda uh, behind the wheel of that car, of course, is our GT uh, competitor, and uh, that is Ryota Kokuan, who is behind the wheel of that machine here as uh, things stand. So uh, he should be relatively quick, but behind the wheel of the uh, Daihatsu uh, at the moment, uh, it'll either be uh, Kubo san or Kawasaki san. You can see Mazda looking pretty quick and pretty handy here, so Kokuan drawing alongside the Daihatsu then. Mazda versus Daihatsu down to the 130R, trying to go the long way around the outside, but Daihatsu having the inside line, having trap position, forcing Mazda to stay the long way around, but they're going to have the inside line subsequently in towards the chicane. Side by side they come, breaking late to go. Mazda take the apex, they take the position, they're into fourth. Easy move, a bit, uh, I think, easy move. Uh, Ryota there looks like he's having a, a fun time out there at the moment, but uh, uh, the, uh, the task ahead of him is quite a big one. About 30 seconds to leader, in comes Suzuki then. I love that livery. It really is a very cool livery, although it does look interesting on a Lexus. So. <laughs> it's pretty striking. It's a yeah. livery that's similar. We used to similar to seeing on their MotoGP bikes and uh, their super bikes and so on and so forth. As Renault come out of the uh, pit lane, but uh, yeah, that's a Suzuki livery. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Renault now on the soft tyres for their final stop. We can see from our position Yamanaka getting ready to uh, get into the Toyota behind the wheel of uh, that car is Sagayuchi at the moment. Then. And he's done a great job of just keeping this gap in the constant. They have got absolutely no immediate threat from behind. And if Yamanaka keeps it on the straight and narrow, this should be a very well-deserved, a very easy victory for Team Toyota. There is Sagiuchi behind the wheel of that car at the moment. I absolutely love the fact he's turned up in his full race gear. Yeah, you know, there's a, a big war, a big uh, a risk he might crash and hurt himself, you know, so he's got to have his race suit on just in case. But it's nice to see it. It adds a little bit of... Uh, Immersion there and authenticity to the event as well. And he's, he's looking fairly comfy out there, isn't he? He's enjoying himself. I think we're going to see a pit stop fairly soon as he switches over to the GT driver. Must be weird for a racing driver to come in here and have to give up to someone who's quicker than him. Yeah, quite. Must be really odd. Uh, <laughs> it's quite, it must, be, it must yeah. be an unusual set of circumstances. Hey, uh, Into the pit lane then come the race leaders, Team Toyota. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen the flashing dots next to Daihatsu and Honda's uh, names. That is because they've been given penalties. Mitsubishi looks like they've made a mistake meanwhile. They drop down into P8 now behind uh, Daihatsu, Honda and Suzuki. So it's been a challenging race, I think it's fair to say, for Mitsubishi as Toyota exit and Tomoki Yamanaka comes out in the lead of the race very comfortably indeed as well. So yeah, Yamanaka in the lead in the Toyota. Uh, things we hear quite a lot <laughs> over the course of these uh, events, but uh, you see all the soft tyre runners there. Those are the ones that we're going to see come through the field, I think, at this point. And we've also had our driver changes, bear that in mind. Everyone with two 
Uh, two pit stops next to their name. Pretty much they're going to be with the GT runners now. If we look up to the stage, it's just a sea of reds so while GT Pro drivers are in at the moment. So it's now going to be a base like a Nations Cup race, which is... Uh, maybe we'll see the driving standards improve slightly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It's possible. There is Daihatsu into the pit lane, then onto the soft tyres. Honda also following suit. There is Igor Fraga now behind the wheel of the Toyota for Team Daihatsu, just exiting behind Honda. And it's all to do here for Igor Fraga to find his way past Honda, exiting over the white line now. I don't think the same rules apply as we have in the manufacturer series, in that if you cross over the white line, you could be given a warning or a penalty. Now, look at Igor Fraga really challenging the Honda immediately, but the problem is here, it's so much one at a time, for the most part, at least, through these tests, that it is quite challenging to try and find your way past unless you position your car in exactly the right place. It should be fun to see if uh, Igor can come through the field like this. He's just trying to take alternative lines to the car in front, just to make sure he hasn't run too close to the back of the Honda. Oh, he's wide, though. Oh. He's up onto the grab. Oh. Eagle, where you go, mate? Eagle, slap on the wrist for you, dude. That's not where you're meant to be going. <laughs> Losing a bit of time there in the Daihatsu. Uh, in front of the field, by the way, gaps come down between the leaders. So Toyota and Subaru now only 13 seconds apart, with Mazda 13 seconds then behind Subaru. So quite a cool. big gaps in the front of the field. They are coming down, but we've only got a couple of laps left. So I'm not quite sure if we're going to get a, uh, a fight for the line or not. Suzuki, meanwhile, I have to say, are in a bit of a difficult position here. They're in P5. Not too far behind them is Mitsubishi, but they're on the hard tyres here, Suzuki. Easily the slowest of the three compounds available. Mitsubishi subsequently on the fastest compound available, and you can see just how much more grip they've got going through the smooth curve. They are really closing up onto the back here of the Suzuki, and not too far in front of them either is Nissan on the medium compound of tyres. So Mitsubishi here could be set to close up onto the back and potentially, maybe, if they could do it, challenge for a podium here in the closing stages because uh, third position of Mazda is also not too far down the road here as well. Through 130R we go, Suzuki still trying to defend that position, not too many aggressive moves or dice is being made there by Mitsubishi as uh, things stand, but definitely closing up onto the back and just taking it really patiently here. That's the crucial thing. Not doing anything too rash and causing them both to lose a bit of time. Can't say I uh, envy the uh, Suzuki driver right now. There he is, top left-hand corner of your uh, screen on those hard compounds and tyres having to try and stare down two runners behind on a uh, much superior tyre. Honda getting a little bit impatient there. Mitsubishi coming through T1, getting a couple of bumps there. Come on, get on with it, mate. Let's get by Suzuki and chase this hand down. But right now, coming through the S's, as you said before, Tom, very much one by one through here. Very hard to get round and pass them unless you are a lot quicker. Let's see just how, quick, how much quicker that soft tyre is, though. I'll tell you what the impressive thing was there, Honda's straight line speed. Of course, they had the advantage of the slipstream, but uh, they are looking significantly faster, and they're going up the inside of Mitsubishi through the left-hander. Brilliant driving there from Honda, and now trying to attack Suzuki as they come down through the left-hander and head towards the Degners. Here's Daihatsu and Igor Fraga on the outside of Mitsubishi as well, but Honda clean around the outside of Suzuki. At the Degna curves, brilliant stuff there from Team Honda. Fantastic driving, and here's Daihatsu versus Mitsubishi in the background. Through the right hand, and we go into the left-handed hairpin. Daihatsu and Igor Fraga on the outside, Mitsubishi on the inside, trying to challenge Suzuki. Contact between Mitsubishi and Suzuki. They go through, and now it's Suzuki who are going to come under threat from Daihatsu. They're going through the right hand, and they're running those to tail. Daihatsu are going to go for the inside line here. They're trying to run three wide, but the circuit's not quite wide enough. They're going to run out of road into the spoon curve. Who breaks late? is side by side, Suzuki run off the track as they come into contact, I think, there with Mitsubishi, and here's Daihatsu taking profit on the inside through the smooth curve and up into P6. Yeah, Igor there was very clever to stay back from that. I think uh, Suzuki got a bit of a helping hand on the circuit there from Mitsubishi and uh, went straight to the scene of the accident, as you say, Tom. They won't be coming back anytime soon, but now uh, Daihatsu up to P6, and now they can try and chase down Honda. These guys feel very close on the track, and they're all on the soft compound of tower as well. Interestingly, but, sorry, that funny there, Jimmy, Subaru in the pit lane, but they've already made two stops. They don't need to make another stop here in this race, unless... But they're going up to the soft compound of tyres, so I, the only reason I can assume they'd make another one is if they made a tyre strategy error or something, but you say that, that's but their uh, third stop in this race. It doesn't really matter at this point, because they're 23 seconds uh, adrift, and they're still three seconds ahead of Mazda on and out, a better tyre. Maybe it makes them think I want to race someone. <laughs> Get into the pit with some fresh tyres, but he's still ahead, so... Um, the gap to Toyota seeming seemingly uh, unassailable, but we'll see. Three laps left, might be a mistake. The Hatsu uh, Honda on your screen right now, Mitsubishi just behind this little three car train coming through the S's again. Uh, 12th time through here. Daihatsu again, uh, piloted by Igor Fraga, who, who was down in eighth position, so made up a couple of places since his pit stop, but uh, now kind of stuck in the middle of these guys here. 
And uh, if you're wondering why there's a Daihatsu livery on that Toyota FD1 there, that's because uh, Daihatsu are, of course, owned uh, or in the same group as Toyota. So uh, they are representing that car with that livery. Yeah, the same with Lexus, of course, uh, running, uh, sorry, the Suzuki rather, running the uh, the Lexus running the Suzuki livery. I'll get the words yeah, out there as you put the team back in. Uh, interestingly, at this point, all drivers on the soft combat of tyres, aside from Mitsubishi and Daihatsu, and a mistake there from Frogger on the brakes. He just about gathers it up, dumped into the back there of Honda, and now they're side by side as well with Mitsubishi, who are taking profit following that mistake. Side by side, they come through the right hand, and this is Christmas come early for Mitsubishi as we head down towards the spoon curve. Mitsubishi on the inside then will into the left-hander, but Daihatsu and Fraga, great later, claims the apex, takes hold of that position, and now tries to challenge once again back onto Honda. These guys, uh, elbows out isn't the word, really. It's just uh, full-on windmill arms at the moment, just into each other at this point. Fraga uh, discovering or rediscovering the track limits in that Daihatsu. Um, but still somehow staying with the Honda in front, and we still have this free car train, 3 one r just a uh, lift of the throttle through here, then try and break as late as you can, coming into the chicane, and then see Honda uh, lead in. Mitsubishi very late on the brakes, almost get a bit of a biff there to Daihatsu coming through there. There we are, there is the Honda drive on the left-hand side of your screen, seeing the uh, inputs into the wheel in real time. As we come down the straight now, now this is a good sip streaming opportunity, so watch the cars behind, they're going to get closer as they get into the tow, into T1, not quite close enough though, I don't think for a London to T1 for Daihatsu, no, not this time around, but look at the gap, and again under the braking, Daihatsu comes right up to the rear wing of the Honda, and but not quite close enough to make a move, and now they're going to have to wait behind all the way through the essence. That Honda is so quick in a straight line, even without the slipstream, just Daihatsu, uh, despite having the tow, weren't able to try and find uh, their way past down this straight, so just over two laps now remaining here at Suzuka then, and it's going to be hugely exciting to see how it all plays out here in the uh, top five. Looks like Toyota, unless anything happens to them, have got this one pretty much sewn up. Subaru also looking pretty comfortable there as well. And, uh, a mistake. It is, yeah. It was a mistake there from uh, Mitsubishi Daihatsu, now in P7. Franga here just looking a little bit unsettled. We're not used to seeing this from him. I know it's only a bit of fun here for these guys, but now Daihatsu drawing alongside Mitsubishi. They're going to try and go the outside line once again into the hairpin, side by side between Mitsubishi and I had to. Can he go a long way around the outside again, Igor Fraga? That is going to be brilliant if he can set it up, but he loses time on the outside, loses position, but he gets the traction in the second phase of it. And now he is through into P6, but Mitsubishi aren't ready to take that line down. And as we head in towards the smooth curve, you can guarantee they're going to think about a lunge down into there. Are they close enough? No, they're not. Daihatsu holds on to the position into sixth place. Just about. This is uh, interesting. And now look at that in the background. Suzuki have come back into the battle. So now we have four cars fighting for P5. Suzuki so much quicker out the spoon curve. They're side by side with Mazda already. They're going to be on the outside though for one third charge. You do not want to be there. You're probably going to get run off the course. They're using the tow from the FT1 in front. They are side by side. Oh man, two into one. Do not go. And Suzuki is pushed wide, but they're going to try and out loud break on the way down into the chicane. Oh my word. Set her across, but that time Cross got bunted. <laughs> and Suzuki goes up into seventh position, albeit maybe under slightly suspicious circumstances. Well, as Murray Walker once quipped at that very corner with that very incident, this is amazing. There it's Team Suzuki. Oh, I'll tell you what, they've take, <laughs> taken seventh place. Place, yeah, they? Yeah, they have, yeah, for all the right reasons there as well. But look at how they're closing up on the back of Team Daihatsu here on these uh, final closing stages of the race. Suzuki really with the elbows out and well they won't probably won't get a penalty following that it's only a bit of fun here as we said but it is great to see them challenging one another here in Nissan then right onto the back of Mazda Mazda of course on the medium compound of tyres the only car in the field that is on that medium compound of tyres and potentially challenging for the top three positions here because Nissan looking very racy indeed Mazda definitely the slower of the two cars and uh, they're gonna have to try and defend with all of their life you can see the two GT drivers behind the wheel of the car Ryota Kokuma uh, behind the wheel of the Mazda and behind the wheel of the Nissan at the moment, it is Yuta Oshi. So uh, let's see what he can do. Can he defend for the next lap and a half against the GTR here? We'll see. Uh, we'll see. I hope for uh, for your sake, no. <laughs> we we we'll want to see a couple of uh, overtaking moves. Turbo Brick versus uh, Mazda Atenza. Coming down now to the spoon curve, and they're in this hand. 
There's Turbo Brick for you, pulling alongside that the Mazda is standing still. Not quite able to go a long way around the spoon curve, and maybe able to come back and try and seek up the inside there, coming up to 130R. No, not quite able to do that either at the moment. So just sitting in the draft, now falls out to the right-hand side again. They're going to be on the outside for 130R, but it seems like this hand, look at the grunt in a straight line. It's going to be passed before it even gets to 130R. There it goes, nice and easy. This hand up into third position. But now, of course, coming to this heavy braking zone into Chicane, can the Mazda come back? I don't know, he cannot. And Nissan move on to the last step of the podium. Breaks up there from uh, Nissan. Mazda really needed to try and attack immediately after that one into that chicane because uh, it is going to just get, allow that gap to get bigger and bigger all the while. They're not able to find their way past then. On to the final lap for the manufacturer exhibition race here at Daihatsu versus Suzuki. Side by side, nearly down the start, finish straight. Daihatsu pulling out of the slipstream but not quite having the straight line speed to make a move into T1 for the final time we go. And this is great racing here between P5, P6 and P7 of Honda, Suzuki and Daihatsu through into the S-Benz we go here, and uh, Daihatsu definitely looking the quicker of the three cars at the moment, but subsequently, Igor Fraga not able to find a way past as uh, things stand. Meanwhile, Nissan still trying to build that gap over Mazda at the moment. Mazda, of course, on the medium compound of tyres, Nissan on the soft compound, and will we see a retaliation here from Mazda on the mediums? Normally, we're used to seeing them uh, passing on the quicker compound of tyres and finding their way through and not being seen again or challenged again. However, it could be said to change here because Mazda are looking pretty quick. Have you seen the background, Cody has taken the 30-second gap in the Mercedes-Benz and is finally on the back of this train. Maybe we have nearly a five-way battle now, six-way battle, sorry, for third place as Mazda tries that luck around the outside. Look in the background now, these guys are all starting to come together and we're going to have a flying finish here. So now Suzuki in fifth, Honda in the silver screen behind them, Daihatsu is behind them and Mercedes-Benz in eighth. But meanwhile, the front of the field, almost a year away is Toyota, 20 seconds the better of Subaru behind them, and Toyota are going to come across the line to win this manufacturer's exhibition race here in Tokyo at the Suzuka Circuit. A great race for Toyota, but we don't want to watch that. This is what we want to watch, Tom. Here is Nissan then versus Mazda. Look in the background as well as Daihatsu are trying to challenge. They've lost out because they've now dropped down behind Mercedes-Benz, so something has gone on there for Team Daihatsu. <laughs> Nissan trying to defend against Mazda. Here is Subaru coming over the line in second, but don't show us that. Show us the battle that's going on for P3 because it's all set to get very exciting indeed. Nissan are just going to hold on to third position against Mazda here. Fourth will go over the line for Mazda. P5 for Suzuki, sixth for Mercedes-Benz right at the end of that, and it's by a drive from Cody Lukowski. And then seventh place for Daihatsu. What happened to them at the end of that one? Honda in eighth, Mitsubishi down in P9. And Renault, well, they're in another postcode at the moment, probably over in Fuji or something like that, because uh, they are down in P10 quite a way down. It's not gone the way of Renault at all here. It has gone the way, though, of Team Toyota. A very strong driver lineup and a very well-deserved and seemingly faultless race victory. <laughs> And end of the race, they got pretty hectic, didn't they? I mean, those guys, all smiles on their faces. I mean, it is, uh, after all, a bit of fun between the manufacturers here, and it's great to see the, again, sportsmanship, shaking of hands, big smiles all around, and uh, a lot of fun there. Um, it was great to see the battles we had, especially towards the end. I mean, at the start of the race, the employees maybe a little bit rough, maybe a tiny bit. Um, we saw a bit of that in the GT drivers as well, but at the end of the day, I think very entertaining, which is the important thing. I hope that you guys liked it too. I think it's fair to say there was no quarter given between those drivers. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of quarter panels beaten, <laughs> however, over the course of that race. It was mega, wasn't it, in the uh, manufacturer exhibition race here with Team Toyota uh, finishing on top. Great drive from Mikhail Hazal for Subaru to finish in P2 there as well. Uh, and also Nissan on the penultimate lap, finding their way past Team Mazda for the final spot on the uh, podium. And uh, we'll be looking and getting ready for the final podium positions uh, very shortly here. And hopefully we'll be chatting to the uh, winning team of Team Toyota in uh, just a couple of moments time, I believe. Uh, first of all, I think we're just going to butt in there and uh, just chat to Team uh, Team Toyota. Yeah, let's go down to Mr. Supra here. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an absolutely great race, and it was a very easy win for that uh, their team. Yeah, team Subaru finishing in uh, second uh, position, just going to come through and talk to their team members. <laughs> and, uh, just saying that he was so nervous. 
Yeah, and managed to settle down and uh, take a very well-deserved uh, result there for Team Subaru. Great stuff there from Mikal as well. Especially given the fact they made three pit stops over the course of that race. There was another team that also made uh, another pit stop. Can't quite remember who it was now, but, uh, well, very impressive stuff. All told from uh, all of these teams and uh, drivers, who's your standout performer in that one, Jimmy? Uh, I mean, Boost was on at the end, of course, so it, uh, I said Cody's drive was, was good, but uh, that's why he, uh, he caught up in the end. Um, I have to say, whoever drove the Toyota first, I think it was the employee, and I probably should know his name as I grab my sheet here, um, that would have been uh, Kazuki Cho. He exactly. was fantastic. And here was the first corner carnage, so uh, you might have missed out on, but was uh, equally fun for us to watch and commentate on. But uh, as you can see at the start of the race, really was very aggressive between the two employees here. And that was Cho there in the bottom left hand corner. There was uh, Mr. Arai getting into the car, son, of course, of Toshi Arai. Uh, but it was quite hectic, Tom, this race. Yeah, it certainly was. You can see their Team Toyota taking over at the front of that one, just building out that advantage. There was uh, Mercedes-Benz, there was Cody Lukowski, looking like he was out for a Sunday drive, but managed to bridge that gap down to Nissan. It all kicked off in the midfield with Honda uh, being pirouetted around. Bit of help there from Team Mitsubishi as Team Toyota continue their ascension uh, through the field and led the way there is Team Daihatsu, Igor Fraga uh, down in eighth position trying to challenge and then we saw uh, Team Suzuki and Mitsubishi also involved in that as well down in towards the spoon curve we went there was lots of great overtaking action it was a race of uh, attrition really there was Mitsubishi and Subaru and Suzuki going side by side through the uh, left-hander of 130R Team Toyota came out in front though with their final pit stop Team Daihatsu meanwhile with uh, Igor Fraga set about immediately trying to challenge against Team Honda but made a mistake actually in the following corner uh, and drop back a little bit but they managed to regain that ground and then it all kicked off in the uh, closing stages between all of these guys as they uh, fought amongst one another just a little bit of a note there Subaru made uh, more pit stops because there was two GT drivers Mizano and oh there drivers. you go then yeah that explains it there is team Mitsubishi being punted off the track and there is team Toyota claiming the checkered flag and that's what it means to the team you see the race times on the right hand side of your screen Toyota, Subaru and Nissan, your top three manufacturers, so an all-Japanese podium here. Then Mazda, Suzuki, Mercedes-Benz, Daihatsu, Honda, Mitsubishi and Renault completing the uh, ten different manufacturers we have had. It was only a bit of fun, but it would prove to be very exciting. Needless to say, the uh, Japanese audience here happy with the results, I think, Tom. <laughs> yeah, certainly uh, so. About ready then for the uh, prize-giving ceremony here in Tokyo then at the Mega Web. A venue, of course, is very close to uh, Toyota's heart. And we'll be keen to see uh, how they all uh, get on the uh, podium when they all step up on there. And hopefully we'll be hearing from those uh, teams in a bit more detail. Hopefully Team Toyota here as well. So about ready then for the podium places to be presented then. So the uh, Japanese announcer there just saying thank you very much to the uh, audience here. And welcoming up Team Nissan in third position there. Great stuff from uh, Team Nissan making their way onto the stage here. Second place, of course, of uh, Team Subaru. As Jimmy said, three pit stops they made in that one because they had uh, more drivers than uh, anybody else. And uh, very impressive stuff there for Masahiro Uaba, Ari Hiroki and Mikhail Hazal, of course, racing for uh, that team. As well, of course, as uh, the driver on the left-hand side of your uh, screen, as you can see there, Takuma Miyazono. And Team Toyota taking victory then here in Tokyo. Sena Sakayuchi, Kazuki Cho, and Tomoki Yamanaka forming that lineup, and they were absolutely unstoppable over the course of that race. Very impressive performances from all three drivers. The Toyota Kazoo racing flags fly here in uh, Tokyo. And now, time for the uh, trophies to be presented then. Kasunori Yamauchi presenting the trophy to third place, then the producer of the uh, Gran Turismo series. Huge congratulations there to Nissan. Absolutely robbing Mazda of that third place on the penultimate lap of the race. Now time for the second prize to be uh, presented to uh, Team Toyota. Kaichi uh, Suchia 
former race driver, of course, as Jimmy's mentioned over the course of this one, presenting the uh, prize there to uh, Team Subaru. Oh, and uh, they let Yamanaka hold the uh, trophy on the uh, left-hand side of your screen. Sorry, apologies, uh, Miyazono on the left-hand side of your screen hold the trophy. And Kazunori Yamiuchi presenting the top prize then to uh, Team Toyota. Our winners here in uh, Tokyo. Very impressive performances from uh, all of these drivers and teams and manufacturers. So I think it's just about time to get ready to uh, hopefully chat to some of these uh, teams in just a couple of moments' time. And we'll be uh, hearing their thoughts on that race as the uh, Toyota Kazoo Racing flags fly. Let's hear firstly from uh, Team Nissan. Taking the uh, last stint that they covered, the cover the uh, position and... And yeah, they started towards the back, but did very well to overhaul the team. Saying that he doesn't play too much of uh, Gran Turismo, but it was so much fun. But he was very stressed over the course of that race. And yeah, but it's uh, great training. <laughs> Hopefully he's uh, aiming to wear the red t-shirts at some point as well. Yes, first he said thank you very much there. And the objective was to not go off the circuit, but he did. At the very beginning, of course, we saw them facing the wrong way. Yeah, but a very good uh, performance from all of those guys there. <laughs> So now it's time for uh, Team Subaru. Here's Mikhail Hazal. Get his answer in English. I'm very happy we finished on the podium for Subaru. And uh, obviously, we are also proud of Boxer. So that makes it even more hap uh, yeah, I, uh, happy to be on the podium. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy for my team, as well as Mio Sonosan being here, as well as our race engineer. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy. Mikhail is out there just saying he's uh, very happy with the performance and uh, saying the team were acting as uh, race engineers as well with the headset. So uh, really good to see uh, the performances of uh, that Subaru team finishing in P2. And uh, now then let's move over to hear from Arai-san. Says the level was very high. He was very nervous and very stressed. And it was like a real race. So, but he really enjoyed it. And just asking him how he was running as a team, saying the strategy that uh, is something you could not experience normally. So, it was very, very exciting. Good stuff there for uh, Team Subaru finishing in P2. And now to hear from Team Toyota. Let's hear from him. It was a great gap that they were able to pull out and add soft tyres. I was able to pull out a gap. I'm very relieved about that. I felt relaxed listening to uh, Cho Sam whilst he was driving. And they were able to turn around the result from last year to uh, last year to this year as well. So, because here, what does Sakaguchi san have to say? <laughs> I hope they're on the racing suit, so I feel a bit embarrassed, he says, first of all. I felt safe and stable and uh, built up that gap. Uh, for the three of us were really fast and the uh, speed was supported by the Toyota Supra, so I'm very thankful for that as well. And let's hear from uh, Cho San as well. At the beginning, there was no trouble at all and I was able to drive and uh, drive very quickly. The speed was so fast, the Supra was so fast. And I was able to lead. And even with the hard tyre, I had a lot of speed. That was my strategy, and that was our strategy. And this time they were able to win, so uh, big congratulations, he says there as well.
Well, lovely to hear from our top three teams up there on the podium. Fantastic stuff from all of our manufacturers. As we said once again, big congratulations to Nissan in P3, Subaru in P2, and Team Toyota on the top step here in Tokyo for the manufacturer exhibition race. And uh, you can see it down there, Kaznori Yamayuchi to the left. And uh, just having some conversations uh, amongst one another and uh, a few conversations going on there as well between these drivers. So yeah, big smiles from all of these guys uh, down there. Jimmy Broadbent, what are your final thoughts on this one? Uh, always good to see these events take place. It's a good way of linking up, of course, the, uh, the manufacturers and kind of showing them the uh, impact they have within GT Sport and then also give them the opportunity to come and play. You know, these guys are busy day by day with uh, the real-life car developments and uh, also real-life racing drivers. To, uh, so to see this platform be, um, I guess, endorsed by the people here is, I think, it's very rewarding. It lends a lot of credibility to our Nations of Manufacturer Cup Series too. So, yeah, very enjoyable. And I'm looking forward to hopefully being here next year for another one. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely mega. Really looking forward to that. Thank you so much for joining us in the Manufacturer Series exhibition race here in Tokyo from Jimmy Broadbent and for myself, Tom Brooks. It's goodbye, and uh, we'll see you for Nations Cup action for World Tour 5 of the 2019 FIA Grand Championships very soon. ということで、2年目を迎えました自動車メーカー対抗マジバトル、トヨタチームの優勝で幕を閉じました。今一度大きな拍手お願いします。Everybody once again give a big applause.